Just one other quick note before we move on from 4 till 5 of Exodus, the story of character of Moses. Let's take the mirror to the image of the Pharaoh telling the Hebrew midwives to kill the boys of all the Hebrews. And then when he comes back a little while later, he says, did you kill the boys? And they say no, and they give their excuse, which is obviously bullshit, but um, that's not going to be a point. And, it, and he comes back and he says, throw the boys in the Nile. Well, let's take the mirror and look at it. Okay, he's talking about all the boys of the Hebrews, throwing them in the Nile and killing them and all that sort of thing. And this could be what you call a lie. It could be a thing written by the winners of the battle to make the old pharaoh look even uglier than he was. I mean, he was already ugly enough having raped his daughter. But imagine that it wasn't all the Hebrews that he wanted did. Imagine, you don't even have to believe it, just imagine that after having had sex with his daughter, meaning rape, statutory rape, and this is an uncommon, a lot of kings have done that. And this is the image he didn't want to portray, so he couldn't he, he couldn't have the kid around the castle. It was a, a dangerous thing. But, I mean, there's enough people around the castle that he would blend in easily enough, but it would be easier for the pharaoh if the boy of his daughter never made it to the world. And if it was today, she would have had an abortion, but they didn't have abortion back then. So he wanted the ch child dead, but the mother, of course, didn't want it dead. So the story goes, instead of um, the child being killed like the father wanted it dead, she said, to be ironic, after he's saying he wanted to throw the baby in the river, that the baby was found in the river. And then she took it home and raised it to be a Hebrew Egyptian. Okay. <laughs> I know you're not going to buy that one, but that's the way it is. Or it could be. I mean, it's just a story, right?